In this video, you'll learn how me getting on TikTok in 2019 as probably the oldest human and certainly the oldest gardener on TikTok led to building a garden from scratch, which I've never done for anyone besides myself with Kehlani. Kevin Spitzer here. If you are new to the channel, it's called Epic Gardening. We teach you how to grow plants, how to grow food successfully in very simple, practical ways. Okay, here's the story. I got on TikTok because I love social media and I started sharing silly plant videos. Someone, unbeknownst to me at the time, shot me a follow and then sent me a DM. We chatted a little bit, said, hey, do you do garden installs? I said, honestly, no, I really don't. But if you have something in mind, I'm at least willing to hear it out, you know, because I get the request a lot. And so we got to talking. We ended up hopping on a Zoom call. It was a great vibe. We were chatting about all sorts of different things, you know, like the importance of growing food, the importance of getting the youth into it on all different demographics, all different cultures. I said, you know what? This actually sounds like a really fun project. Let's go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna take you on the planning journey right now of how we selected exactly what to plant at Kehlani's house, all the sort of things that go into that. So you can see how we think about building a garden from scratch, from plant selection to soil, to beds, to location, all that kind of stuff. Without further ado, cultivate that like button for the Kehlani collab, and let's get into the video. Today begins the journey. We're gonna head to the nursery right now to pick up some plants for this project. So I will put the phone down and we'll see you at Mission Hills Nursery. We're here, one of my favorite nurseries in San Diego, doing some research. Let me show you what we've already picked up. We grabbed a passion fruit, Frederick variety, right here. We are capping it off with a pomegranate. So we purchased a wonderful pomegranate. Look who I found. Suncat. Hey. <laughs> so what we're doing now is we're planning on a bed by bed basis. So I'll show you what we have. We have a squash bed. We have a budding salsa bed right here with a couple grafted tomatoes and we've got some peppers. So two jalapenos and a couple random ones as well as some yellow sweet Spanish. But now what we want to do for one of the larger beds we're building is an herb bed. You can't go wrong. Greek oregano, French tarragon, English thyme. We should probably grab a lemongrass. Yeah. And um, we'll grab some basil and rosemary and stuff as well. All right, flower daddy update here. We have three different flats worth of marigolds. These cosmos are just so beautiful, so huge. This stuff smells straight up like sweet crystallized honey. The epic forerunner is loaded to the brim. I actually don't even know how we're gonna fit we got most of what we needed at Mission Hills Nursery, but I always like to stop by WAN, Walter Anderson, to see what they've got. So we need some tomatoes, which is what I've got. I mean, Walter Anderson always has an insane amount of tomatoes. Okay, the last little bit of stuff is picked up. We have some artichokes, some tomatillos, and some determinate tomatoes. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier. We brought the seedling table under here to protect from the heat, but also to load up all of our stuff that we're bringing up. So the way we're kind of doing it is we're relabeling, bringing some garden straw up just in case. We're bringing a level, a couple extra tools. Thank you, Corona. We're gonna be doing a lot more. We gotta fit all this in the car somehow. So good luck to us. Good morning, everyone, it's early. Jacques here. What do we got, some, some snacks? Got the red snacks. You gotta have your Gardettos. <laughs> <laughs> this is the final result. We, I don't even know how we did this, but we have an entire garden plus gear in the car. Okay, we got a little little friend on the side of the road here. Peacock. So here's the space we are working with. Let me show you real quick. We've got this sort of open area. So north is that way. So that's gonna inform some of our garden planning. North is directly this way, which means there's good southern exposure on this garden throughout the day. But you've got this tree here, and you've got this that'll provide some shade. We have the original eight and one tall beds. And then over here, we also have the original eight and one shorter version. So we're going all birdies all the time and it's gonna be really awesome. So now we need to get this back to the house. So I just wanna introduce you guys to my lovely friend, Mr. Epic Gardener himself. This is Kevin, everybody. Um, hey, what's up? Basically, I'm gonna keep it really short and sweet and say like I stalked him on TikTok. <laughs> I, got, I got a DM from you on Insta. Yeah, okay, yes, but because uh, I, I stalked you on yeah, TikTok. Yeah, I had At heard. first, I don't think you knew who I was. I didn't, and then I looked you up, and then I started listening to your music, and now you're in my top 1% of played. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we got to talking. 
and you like to garden. You grew up gardening. I did grow up gardening yeah. and I have not gardened as an adult. And everybody who follows me knows that I just found this incredible house that I bought about a year ago that has a lot of space. Yeah. And my intention was to utilize the land in the best way possible and utilize the fact that it is a freaking heat yeah. location, like yeah. heat magnet. So as we're building the beds in this lower area, closer towards the entrance of the house, we took a walk around with Kehlani and we were like, you know what, this doesn't make sense. And that's what it's all about when you're designing a garden. The place that you decide to place your garden, the location, cements it in stone. That's where it's gonna be for a long time. You're not gonna up and move it. In almost all cases, it'll be there for at least a few seasons. So you have to choose the right place. And as we walked around the property, we realized this is close to the front gate. It is nice and open, great sun exposure but it's probably not gonna get tended to because it's so far away. And that's just a subconscious thing. You know, if I put my garden all the way over in that corner, I'm just less likely to go over there. And so location really matters when you're selecting a garden. So we found a spot up near the kitchen in this neglected, underused spot with a lot of lawn space with some gopher wire that already existed. So Jock and I, the garden assistant, the garden hermit himself, we looked at each other and we said, for sure, this is the spot. So we've got grass here, which is dead and that's fine because we're gonna be putting a garden over it. Gopher wire is already in the ground. We're setting up the hose link already because it's gonna get pretty hot. Jacques's got that going. And here's the idea, close to the house. So we're gonna hug this side right here because wind whips through this area right here in a pretty severe way, especially in the winter time. So we'll probably do four of the tall beds right there and then we're gonna stage up the shorter guys maybe over here. We'll play around with the spacing, but closer to the house for accessibility and just a little bit better overall conditions. So at this point, we're just hanging out, building beds. The thing I like about the Birdies Raised Beds, which of course, full disclosure, I sell on my store in America, in Canada, anywhere in North America, you can get these from me. The thing I like about them is how modular they are. So you've got different heights, you get the 15 and the 30 inch heights, but then you also can play around with the panels and you can configure them to almost any space. You can make a really small one, you can make a really long and thin one, sort of a short and stout one. There's all sorts of different ways you can align them. So we spent the next few hours just building them, playing around with them, almost like playing Tetris or playing Legos. What fits and how do these exactly interplay in the space? If I get it so popping up here with like the gardening stuff, I feel like I'll want to live here for a long time. Not in a, in a dream world, I'd have a big enough, yeah, I saw that. No, that was, was terrible. That went in, yeah, for sure. That totally, went in. yep. <laughs> I'd have enough, I'd have to be able to make this place so crazy. I don't care how long it would take that eventually, like, I give just free food to people. That so, like, fun. maybe if, if I don't care how long it takes, like, I'd rather just use my resources to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't mess with her. Yeah. Don't mess with her. She's been. She'll drill you. <laughs> <laughs> we got what? Three beds done? Yep. Three, and four beds? I'm doing it the right way. She's doing it the right way. <laughs> and I sent my assistant to the store to get a straw hat. Yeah, she wants to join the club. Yeah. So we got one more of these to build, three more of these, and then we actually have to figure out what you're going to help with on what actually where to put them. them. Yeah. All right. Straw hat on. Straw hat mafia. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, I think we got the soil, I hope. It's a steep old hill, so <laughs> if it makes it up here, I'll be very, very pleased. Okay, so it's uh, literally 8,000 pounds of soil from Espoma. Thank you so much, Espoma. Look at that. Look at that. Woo! We're going epic. We're going epic gardening. Thoughts, feelings? <laughs> No, you got a belt. You got a couple calluses, yeah. I did, yeah, I got some blisters on my hand. We love to see it for screwing it in. You know. Um, we got the beds. They got the beds. Yeah. I, I screwed a couple screws. <laughs> and they brought this was the craziest part. I was watching them bring all these big old things of freaking soil up here for the last like three hours. It took a while. It took a while. So we got everything. We got the plants. We're gonna go hit the hotel, we're gonna chill. At the end of day one, Jacques and I were riding high, but also psychologically and physically defeated because we had been up since maybe 4.30 a.m. and then worked for maybe 12 hours straight in 
a hundred plus degree heat. So we were ready to chill. We found kind of a mediocre hotel somewhere nearby. We grabbed some food, hung out, and then we tried to get some sleep to prep for the next day, which was all about finalizing location, filling up the soil, and the most fun part, of course, planting all of the plants. It is day two. We just can't get enough up to the house. It's very difficult. So we're going to be forklifting in some more. Problem solved. Okay, we're driving a flatbed. We got some soil behind. The garden hermit himself is here. This is really the last push. Once we get this up to the house, it's the fun part, which is actually planting it out and building it out. So let's go. What we've done is, instead of moving all of the soil we moved yesterday like five times, which is just not smart, and also not good on the body for this heat, We've locked in this bed in place. We've leveled it out. It's in the perimeter. So we, we kind of we kind of know something has to go here. We've chosen this bed to go here, the tall eight and one. We got some tree trimmings from the green bin that we found. We don't have enough, but at least for now, at least on this bed, we can fill the bottom with the tree trimmings and make up a little bit of a difference in some of this soil. Just saves on the cost. You guys have seen this on the channel before. Okay, the first two beds are in. What we've done here is we've gone 30 inches apart. So we have a nice walking path throughout this entire thing. I think what we'll do is we'll split the difference on these longs. We'll keep them nice and low here. Be the herb garden, the medicinal garden, the tea garden, some of the corn or something like that. And then we're gonna go 30 inches apart over here and do one, two, three where that soil bed or that bag of soil is. And then the last two, which are this one and this one, we're probably gonna place here and here to keep it all in this tight little spot where you can walk right through this arbor and access the garden. So we think we've come up with the best design for this particular space. So let me show you real quick. So here you have one of the entrances and then way over there, you have another one of the entrances. So I wanna walk you through the space real quick and show you how we're thinking about it. This is an arbor, by the way. So what's gonna happen here is you're gonna walk in like this. This arbor is gonna be right here probably going just like that. There'll be a passion fruit on this side. And then this bed right here is gonna be where the soil is. So there'll be one, two, three tall beds lining that cliff side right there, which I think looks really nice. We've got some nice short beds here. And then we've got a tall and short bed here. So you kind of get this little arbor here. You walk and now boom, you're in the garden. You get a beautiful amount of beds to work in, all space nicely, easy to work in. And then when you wanna head out, just pop out through here. I think this spot right here couldn't really make a bed work here, so we probably are gonna plant a tree right here. Okay, we're basically done filling, and I think it looks really nice. So what I'm gonna do now, before we actually get to the planting, is throw some biotune in, because when you fill a bed from scratch, you're gonna get natural settling, number one. So we have some extra bags of soil. We'll see how it settles once we water it in. But I wanna just sort of pre furt this with some biotone, just so I don't have to put it in the planting hole. It'll save us a lot of time. We're planting out all eight of these beds. So right now I'm taking a bag of Biotone and scooping it in and mixing it in. We're filled up, we're amended. Now begins the great hydration. You gotta get this massive bit of soil wet. You'll have to water it way less if you get it wet one time really deeply. You'll be good to go. So we're just leveling the beds out, watering it in, and on to the next. Okay, we have a visitor here. This is Amy. Hey. Kaylani's friend, she's a gardener extraordinaire. Yes. So she's gonna help us lay out some of the plants that we picked out. Yes just so that when it comes time to plant, it gets really, really nice and easy. All right, we are going to mount the hose link now. In this spot, we're gonna use a four by four with some quick creep, just make life easy. We have the plants in roughly where we want them to be. We'll see if anything changes once Kehlani gets back. We've got our little watering post hardening up over there. We're gonna take a lunch break and be back in just a second. We're gonna put some finishing touches here on the arbor. Since the wind whips through here like crazy, we're gonna dig it down a couple inches and then put the foot long bolts in. Okay, the plan is going in. So we chose the passion fruit on this side. Once it establishes itself, it'll just chill. And it'll go all the way up over this. We have kind of a long one. So we're gonna get it in. I'll throw some fertilizer down on the bottom. You don't need to really do this, but I like to just do it as a matter of course. Fitting it exactly to there. And then we just backfill around. Easy, easy. Oh, yo, it's a surprise. 
I can't tell you how satisfying it was in two days to go from nothing to something. I have to be honest, even at my own garden, I didn't work at that aggressive of a pace because there's just so much going on here at the house. So it was so fun. Kehlani is one of the most genuine, nice, like genuinely nice people that I've met. It was a really unique experience for myself and for Jacques. We had an absolute blast. I hope you guys all learned a lot from the experience and had some fun doing it. It's just so cool to be able to build a garden for someone who used to garden as a kid, wants to get back into it, and then you saw everyone just light up as soon as you started planting things. So we're done. We're done. Two hard days. Props to Jacques behind the camera. We got a little treat. We got a straw hat for Kehlani. And we got a little, little special something. So let's see how the garden looks. For real, for real. And it turned out so good. some pictures from after the fact of how things were going just so so cool so hopefully you guys enjoyed this drop a comment who should i collaborate with next tag them in the comments let me know good luck in the garden and keep on growing